next unit number 3 fiber optics and its applications so after the invention of laser and optical fibers there occurred a revolution in communication systems so earlier we were using microwaves and radio waves for transmitting data from one point to another so after that people attempted of sending data by using light waves or light beams where light beam are acting as a carrier wave in open atmosphere so these light waves can carry a large number of information compared to microwaves and radio waves because they have a larger bandwidth they started using light beams as carrier waves but sending in the open atmosphere these light beams are affected by atmospheric conditions such as rain fog etc so they required a guiding medium to transmit all the data from one point to another point by using a light beam so for that purpose they used optical fibers so optical fibers acts as a guiding medium for the light waves which act as a carrier wave to transfer data from one point to another point optical fiber are made up of either glass or a transparent dielectric glass or plastic transparent dielectric material so this optical fiber consists of a center part called as core which have an higher refractive index and the core is surrounded by the same plastic or glass material called as cladding with a lesser refractive index and the entire core and cladding is covered by an outer jacket made up of polyethylene to protect it from other disturbances so this outer jacket acts as a protection for this optical fiber so this optical fiber consists of a center part this optical fibers are made up of either or uh, either glass or plastic transparent materials the center part is called as core which has a higher refractive index and this core is surrounded by a same dielectric material called as cladding whose refractive index is less compared to that of the core the entire core and cladding is covered by an outer polyethylene jacket which protects the optical fiber so let us see to propagate the light inside the optical fiber or the principle of propagation of light inside the optical fiber is total internal reflection so only when total internal reflection takes place the uh, that is the light beams or the light waves can be transmitted inside the optical fiber principle of propagation so how light waves are transmitted or passed through the optical fiber so for the light waves to get transmitted inside the optical fiber it has to satisfy two conditions one is the refractive index of the core should be high compared to that of the cladding and next is the critical angle should be that is the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle only if these two conditions are satisfied the all the light waves can be transmitted inside the optical fiber the first condition is what the first condition is the refractive index of refractive index of core should be high compared to compared to cladding that is let if n1 be the refractive index of the core and n2 be the ref refractive index of the cladding n1 should be greater than n2 so this is the first condition next condition is the angle of incidence 
theta i should be greater than theta c, where theta i is the angle of incidence and theta c is the critical angle. Only if these two conditions are satisfied, the beam will the beam will undergo and total internal reflection and all the light waves can be transmitted inside the optical fiber. So, the basic principle for propagation of light through optical fiber is total internal reflection. So, now let us see how this total internal reflection takes place. So, for example, this is core and this is ing cladding and this is the normal light always move from a rarer medium to denser medium so when the light is incident on the core when theta i is less than theta c when theta i is less than theta c all the ray will be refracted all the rays will be refracted when theta i when theta i is equal to theta c when theta i is equal to theta c this is theta c this is theta i when theta i is equal to theta c all the light way light rays will pass along the interface of the core and cladding all the light waves will pass along the interface of the core and the cladding only when theta i is greater than theta c when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle all the light rays will be totally internally reflected so this is the principle by which the light rays are transmitted inside the optical fiber so when does the total internal reflection takes place only when the angle of incidence theta i is greater than the critical angle all the light energy or all the light waves will be totally internally reflected and the light waves can pass through the optical fiber applying Snell's law n1 sin theta c is equal to n2 sin 90 so we want only the acceptance angle theta c so sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1 since what is sin 90 sin 90 since sin 90 is equal to 1 this is n2 into 1 or n2 by n1 therefore the acceptance angle theta c is equal to sin inverse of n2 by n1 acceptance angle and numerical aperture so for this let us consider an optical fiber so this is the core of the optical fiber and this is cladding of the optical fiber and this is the central axis now when a ray a o strikes at the axis of the core at an angle incident angle i so once when this ray oa enters the optical fiber due to change in refractive index it will get refracted at the point b at the point b so now at the point b at the interface of the core and cladding the angle theta c is equal to 90 minus theta now the ray what happens it passes along the interface of the 
core and the cladding. Now theta c is equal to 90 minus theta. So now all the rays whose angle of incidence is less than theta i will be transmitted inside the optical fiber. So now at point B what happens? The angle of that is the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle that is theta c is equal to 90 minus theta at this point. So at this point due to total internal reflection all the light rays will be totally internally reflected and will be transmitted inside the optical fiber. So the light rays which falls within this angle, this is called the acceptance angle of the optical fiber. So acceptance angle is what? All the light rays which falls within this angle, A and A dash, let us keep it as A and A dash. Only the light rays which falls within this A and A dash will satisfy the two conditions. What are the two conditions? One is total internal reflection. That is one is the refractive index N1 should be greater than N2 and the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle. So all the light beams which falls within this angle between A and A dash will satisfy these two conditions on all the light rays will be transmitted inside the optical fiber. Here N0 is the refractive index of the air, N1 is the refractive index of the core and N2 is the refractive index of the cladding. Now applying the Snell, Snell's law at the entry point or to the ray OA, applying Snell's law to the ray OA that is N0 sin i is equal to n0 sin i is equal to n1 sin theta n1 sin theta where n0 is the refractive index of the air and n1 is the refractive index of the core so from the air only it enters the core so n0 is the refractive index of the air and n1 is the refractive index of the core so now the ray enters into the optical fiber. So what is sin i? Sin i is equal to the angle of incidence is equal to n1 by n0 into sin theta is equal to 90 sin that is equal to sin theta. Therefore, sin i is equal to n1 by n0 sin theta is equal to sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos square, cos square theta therefore sin theta is equal to root of 1 minus cos square theta put this as equation number 1 now applying the Snell's law at the point B now applying the Snell's law at the point B that is n1 sin theta c where theta c is the acceptance angle sin theta c is equal to n2 it passes along the interface of the core and cladding therefore it is sin 90 degrees that is applying the Snell's law at this point B now n1 is the refractive index of the core and theta c is the acceptance angle n2 is the refractive index of the cladding since it passes along the interface of the core and cladding making an angle of 90 degrees so it is written as sin 90 so now sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1 sin 90 what is sin 90 sin 90 is 1 sin 90 is equal to 1 so therefore sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1 n2 by n1 and theta c is what sin theta c is it makes an angle theta c is equal to 90 minus 
theta. Therefore, sin 90 minus theta is equal to n2 by n1. What is sin 90 minus theta? Sin 90 minus theta is cos theta. Cos theta is equal to n2 by n1. Put this as equation number 2. So, now substitute the, uh, substituting equation 2 in equation 1. Substituting equation 2 in equation 1. So, from equation 2, what is the value of cos theta? Cos theta is equal to n2 by n1. Cos theta is equal to n2 by n1. So, substitute, uh, substituting the value of cos theta from equation 2 in equation 1. Now, sin i is equal to n1 by n0 into root of 1 minus the value of uh, substituting the value of cos theta that is n2 by n1 root of n2 by n1. So, on simplifying this sin i is equal to n1 by n0 into root of 1 by n2 by n1 the whole square. So, that is equal to n1 by n0 into n1 minus n2 by n1 the whole square. So, the angle of incidence i is equal to sin inverse of n1 square minus n2 square divided by n0 where n1 is the refractive index of the core and n2 is the refractive index of cladding and n0 is the refractive index of air. The refractive index of air is 1. The refractive index of air is 1. Therefore, i is equal to sin inverse of root of n1 square minus n2 square or i max. i max is the maximum angle. i is the acceptance angle. So, only the light rays which falls within this angle will be transmitted inside the optical fiber. Therefore, i max is equal to sine inverse of root of n1 square minus n2 square. So, it is acceptance angle. Acceptance angle is the angle which uh, the the angle uh, the acceptance angle the light rays which falls within this acceptance angle will only undergo the total internal reflection. So only when the total internal reflection takes place, the light rays can be transmitted inside the optical fiber. So the light rays which falls within the angle A and A dash will only uh, will undergo total internal reflection and will be the light rays will be transmitted inside the optical fiber. So, this is what is called the acceptance angle of the optical fiber. So, I max is called the acceptance angle of the optical fiber. Numerical aperture or simply it is written as Na. Numerical aperture is defined as the sign of the acceptance angle. Numerical aperture is defined as the sign of the acceptance angle sin i max that is equal to root of n1 square minus n2 square. Therefore, numerical aperture n a is equal to root of n1 square minus n2 square. This is numerical aperture of the optical 5.